Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks and Keith and today I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I'm going to have a go at making mozzarella. But before I do that I need to do a few shout outs. First one to my new Patreon fan, Matt Shetkar. Yes! Thank you. <laughs> and one to the new Green Ranger who just wanted a shout out. There you go, you got it. And the third one to I am not a number, I am not a number for pointing out to me uh, that um, the Luke and Pete podcasts gave Keith Cooks a, a serious mention in episode 100. Um, now, sad to say, I don't actually listen to podcasts very much in fact at all so it was quite a surprise to find that I was being talked about there, there were a few things I might take issue with but you know uh, free world freedom of speech all that malarkey so uh, yeah Luke and Pete podcast I will put a link it, it, when I can figure out what it is and yeah go and have a listen and Pete you are my favorite person so mozzarella the fabulous Italian melty cheese it's supposedly one of the easiest cheeses to make but um, I, I've always struggled with it mainly because I was using the wrong kind of milk end of you know um, to do it you need either raw milk unpasteurized which is incredibly hard to get or you can do it quite successfully with non homogenized milk which is um, you know, it's still a bit hard to get, but I've I found it in one of my local supermarkets, so that's brilliant. So I said I'm going to have a go at doing it rather than I'm going to definitely make mozzarella because I had a go yesterday and it nearly worked, but not quite. But now I think I know where I went wrong, so um, we'll change that and have another go. Let's get on with it. Okay, first thing you need to do is sterilise all your gear. So I've got a big pot of water coming to the boil and I'm going to throw in the things that I need. So I've got um, a ladle, palette knife, straining spoon, tablespoon, teaspoon, measuring spoons, and measuring cups. And my actual cheesecloth. And those just need to sit in boiling water for about 10 minutes. Uh, also, my digital thermometer, I'm not putting that in because, you know, electric. <laughs> but um, I will clean the tip with IPA, isopropyl alcohol. Ingredients for my mozzarella, I've got four litres of non-homogenised milk. I'm going to use two and a half teaspoons of citric acid and a quarter of a rennet tablet and a teaspoon of cheese salt. So rennet tablets, it's... Uh, Near the recipes, they're like, they nearly always use an eighth or a quarter or a half. I don't know why they make them so big. Make them smaller, guys. Be easier and more accurate. Do it. And I know you can get it in liquid form and powdered as well, just to confuse the issue even further. And cheese salt is just non-iodized salt. It's probably kosher salt would be uh, a good substitute and, or, you know, if not actually entirely the same thing. So, so all this stuff's boiling. I forgot to mention my tongs as well. I need my tongs, uh, basically, to get all the hot stuff out. Okay, that's had a good 10 minutes, so we'll uh, get everything out. Now, I'm about to heat up the, the milk to start making the curd, so I need to dissolve two and a half teaspoons of citric acid in 250 ml of water which is half a cup so the original recipe that i did yesterday said one and a half teaspoons it didn't work because the acid level was too low so we'll try with more acid and fingers crossed to see what happens now i'm going to pop my milk into the pan and the citric acid solution and we want to gently heat that until it reaches 32 degrees Celsius. Now we need to dissolve the quarter of a rennet tablet in 60 ml of water, which is a quarter cup. Okay, we just hit 32, so take that off the heat and add the dissolved rennet and keep stirring it for about 30 seconds to make sure that rennet is dissolved throughout the milk 
that's already starting to coagulate. So pop it on and let that stand for five to ten minutes and the curds should separate out from the whey. Okay, let's have a look at our curds. Ooh, ooh, they look um, pretty curdy. So what we need to do now is cut them and see if we get a clean break. I've, oh, it's sunk. <laughs> that didn't happen yesterday. Might be too acid. Um, so a clean break, well I've got a clean break, meaning that when you cut it, the two halves stay separate uh, rather than running back together. So I'm gonna try and cut this into a grid. Oh dear, this might be another fail. Basically you're trying to get two and a half centimeter, one inch cubes. Hold on, right, and then we'll just scoop them out. Oh. Actually, they look pretty good. Pop them in the colander lined with muslin and we'll let them drip dry until you know a lot of the whey has gone. You don't want, um, you're not looking to get a completely dry product. So I'll just tie this up into a ball thing <laughs> and then I'll hang it up where the bananas usually are. And let that drip dry until the whey stops flowing. Right, we're just about finished. All we need to do now is cook the curds and then form them into balls of mozzarella. So I need to get the uh, pan of whey out of the way, because, uh, but don't throw it away because there are many uses for whey. I am sorry about that sentence. Okay, so I need a bowl to work in to do the cooking of the curds. I've uh, got a bowl of iced water to put the formed balls in to chill and I've got a pan of hot water which is just coming up to 70 degrees Celsius. So I'm using my sous vide immersion circulator to maintain the heat at a constant temperature. If you don't have one of those, chances are you don't, just wing it. <laughs> Alright, here's the drip dried curd, so I'm just going to unwrap it from the cheesecloth. 70 degrees, tip it out into the bowl. Ooh. Now add a teaspoon of cheese salt. Okay, we need to heat the curds to uh, melt them a bit. So I'll just put some of the hot water on. And wait for it to melt. Maybe a bit more water. It should sort of, um, uh, drip and stretch off the spoon when it's ready. Not doing it yet. This is where it went wrong yesterday. It would not melt, it just wasn't interested. And um, I really hope that doesn't happen today. Because if it doesn't melt, it won't stretch, it won't have the right texture. Although, it, you know, it does actually make something a bit like halloumi. And uh, we had some this morning for breakfast on toast, it was brilliant. <laughs> but it wasn't mozzarella. Okay, we might be getting there. You know, it is, it is kind of stretching, which is good, but it's, you know, it's, it's still kind of gritty and lumpy. It's not smooth. I don't know, more water. Maybe whack the temperature up a bit. Oh, that is well stretchy. Oh yeah, baby. So the temperature of that water now is uh, 75 degrees Celsius, so that might be what we should be aiming for. It's still a bit lumpy, it's not smooth. Okay, let's, uh, ooh, that's hot, <laughs> as it's supposed to be. This is, um, oh, this feels lovely. This is lovely and smooth and stretchy and shiny. I think this is your actual real mozzarella. So just stretch it and fold it under and then you kind of pinch off the bottom between your finger and your thumb and pop that in Ooh, the iced water
right, here we go. Mozzarella. Woo With, this is Keith Hi guys. Hello. Mozzarella. Well, did I say mozzarella? You did. It is mozzarella. Isn't that beautiful? It's kind of cheese. Made out of cheese. Yes. Made out of fermented milk. Oh, and not fermented mozzies. No mosquitoes were hurt in the making of this mozzarella. Oh, look. And it got dressed and everything. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm on holiday. You know. Mm. Oh, yeah. In Italy or Greece or somewhere. That were, <laughs> that were a metaphor. Mm. It's salty. Yeah. We'll put salt on it. Mm. <laughs> I was going to say. And I'll mm. put salt in it. But yeah. I'll put more on. Because oh, yeah. it's pretty bland otherwise. It's like a little poem though, isn't it? When you look at it, it looks so pretty. And then you eat it, you get that. You get the the crisp. Uh, everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm busy, me. This is, oh, this is lovely. How long does it take to make mozzarella? <laughs> Two days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. No, in theory, if you don't mess about like what I do, um, they could probably do it in um, half an hour. Yeah? Yeah. I might make this myself when it runs out. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. You need tuition from an expert, <laughs> not me. Mm. Right then, we like that. Mm. So. Mm. Mm. That's right, olive oil, to do pepper, salt, cheese, tomato, all my favourite things. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching and See you next time.